Here's your guide on how to check the value of your cards. Welcome to the Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh! channel where we cover everything collecting and investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Now this is probably the number one question I see everyone ask on every single sales group ever. And a lot of people are tired of explaining it. So now maybe they gave you the link to this video so you can learn. A lot of people think, oh, I have these cards and I noticed the Blue Eyes White Dragon sell for $10,000, the PSA 10 first edition SDK. So therefore my Blue Eyes is probably worth a lot as well. Well, very likely not. If you are already excited and thinking of buying a jet ski, I'm sorry, let's calm down. It's very likely that your cards aren't worth much. Let's go over them anyway. And maybe you do have some hidden gems. So the first thing you wanna make sure is that your cards aren't fake. Some fakes look very real and others don't. The best way is probably to just look up some cards. Usually the stars are a very clear indicator. Try to compare the stars on your cards with the ones you see on Google or on some deck profiles. The stars are often a giveaway, but you know, spotting fakes can be pretty tough if you're not into Yu-Gi-Oh! And this video isn't gonna cover that, but maybe your cards are fake. It is an option. Just check the stars, make sure they're the same. And if not, I'm sorry. Now for looking at value, a lot of people see the name and the art. Look, oh, it's the same. Therefore, my card is the same as the $1,000 card, right? Well, often not. Firstly, be aware that if a card was graded, so it was in a PSA case or a BGS case, your old cards in your binder and the cards in those cases are not comparable at all. So you need to be looking at cards that sold that weren't in case. That's just a quick little giveaway there already. Then you're gonna be looking at the name and the image. Now that alone is not enough. Again, I have seen people say, oh, I have a Raigeki and this Raigeki sold for 800, so mine's 800. No, again. No. The name is the first thing you're gonna use. Now, where do you use this? There are a couple sites. I often see people just going on eBay and check things that are listed, but listed is not enough because anyone can list anything at any price. You need to go to sold listings. So one easy way, again, you can go to ebay.com, look up the name of your card and the set number, which you will find bottom right of your image, something like MRL stripe, 060. That might be a set number together with your name. Now one final note is that your card should be first edition if you're looking at first edition prices and if you're not looking at first edition prices, meaning left side under the image, there's no first edition, then you are looking at a unlimited card. Unlimited means it was part of a reprint offset set. You press enter and then you scroll down and in the left section of eBay, you can click sold items. This way you can look at sold variants of your card, which again proves people actually paid this much for this card. Next, you wanna compare this to that same card on let's say cardmarket.com or tcgplayer.com. Now you can't check sold listings as easily there, but you can still get a ballpark, you know. If you notice your card, again, with the correct name and set number being listed for the same price across all platforms and sold listings, you probably now know the value of your card. So those are the three major things you are looking for when you are trying to see if the card you're holding is the same one as the one sold, the name, the set number and whether it's first edition or not. Now some may be limited edition and once again you can check for that on these sites. So once you're making sure that you're looking at the same card, name, set number, first edition, then you can start comparing. Are the sold listings around the same price as card market and the same price as let's say TCG player, then you probably know the price. Another important thing is that the set number may also have another letter in there. Maybe it says MRL Stripe E060. That means it's a European card. European cards are worth less than Americans on average when we are talking about the vintage card market. So once again, make sure that you're actually looking at the same variant of your card. So it's very important. You are both looking at the set number and at the image. Finally, condition is extremely important. Some people think that some random card they found in their attic is in mint condition or great condition. More than likely it is not. The scale most people use is mint, near mint, excellent, good, and then under that we're not even really discussing prices anymore, or mint, near mint, lightly played, medium played, heavy played, damaged. Once again, if you're looking at cards that were played with on the playground, even if you kept them safe, 
with your rubber band, very likely they are going to medium play, heavy play or damaged or once again far below excellent. You might think they are good condition but they're really really not. When you list something as near mint it must be almost as if you just took it out of a brand new pack. Now some people may argue, no, no, then it's actually mint. Sure, but in general, a lot of people who don't really know much about this tend to say near mint or mint way too quickly. So I'm just giving you that as a little bit of extra information. So to wrap this up once again, name, set code, first edition or not, you look at the same condition of card and then you compare eBay sold listings, TCG player and card market. If you get around the same ballpark of price of the same card you are holding, given all these things and condition, then you know the price of your cards. Now, if you don't want to check out every single card like that, because yes, it's quite a ride to check, you could also just start by looking up the shiny cards, otherwise known as hollows or foils. Generally, if your card isn't bling bling, it very, very, very likely isn't worth all that much. Beyond that, if your card isn't first edition, it once again is very likely not worth that much. There are a few outliers, but in general, if you don't want to go through your bulk of 500 cards you found in your attic, the first thing you wanna do is checking the foils or better yet, the foil first edition cards the way we just discussed. Hope that was useful. If you get this question all the time, you can always just give them this link. I hope this was a really easy way for people to get into this and learn. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.